Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Micro Projects with Michelle. Today I'm super excited because we're going to be doing another micro project. Today we're going to be looking at some Reddit versus AI answers and see if there are any difference between how Reddit people answer questions and how AI does. So super excited, let's turn up together. Okay guys, let's get started on micro project number 12, which is AI versus human response analysis. So what we're gonna be doing today is analyzing whether or not AI responses are different from humans, and we're gonna use a data set called the HC3 data set. So to begin, what we're gonna do is start by loading the data set as always. So as you can see here, it is a CSV file, so we're gonna do um, read CSV. So we first need to import pandas, so import pandas, as PD, and then to read the data set, we're going to do pd.readcsv, and then we're going to add our data set, which is hugging face dash hello um, dash sample AI dash 100.csv. Okay, and so we're going to run this really quickly and see to make sure it compiles, which it does. And as you can see here, we have our data frame, which contains 100 rows total, and it has the question that um, basically that they're asking the prompt, or sorry, they're asking, and then we have a human answer as well as the chat GPT answer. So that's what our data set looks like as of right now. And so as you can see, we can see um, a sample output. So we can run the cell to uh, find like a random question and as well as the human and AI answer. So let's do this really quickly. As you can see the question is how are movies edited to be in 3D when they aren't originally filmed in 3D? Like Lord of the Rings, please explain like I'm five. And so um, this is a human answer from that they got from Reddit. And then um, they also put that question to ChatGPT and got the ChatGPT answer. So that is that. Let's run this test case to make sure it works correctly, which it should. Perfect. So now let's move on to part two, which is response length analysis. And so for part two, point one, we're going to find the response length. And so to use it, we're going to have this thing called a string function, which is one of a um, string function and then the one we're going to use is length and so if for example we do df column dot store dot length that's going to be able to compute the length of every single element in that column and so we want to find the length um, for the human versus chat and then see if there's any difference between the two and so the first thing we need to do is to add two new columns to the data frame for human and um, chat so we're going to do df human answer len called that's our new column and then we're going to call that um, df and then we're going to do human answer, so that's our current column, dot stir, dot length, and that's going to give us the length, and it's going to compute that for every single row in the data frame. Similarly, we can do that again for the ChatGPT, so we can just copy-paste this code, and then we're going to do ChatGPT answer len, and then we're going to do ChatGPT answer. And then when we run this really quickly, we should be able to then um, visualize our data frames. As you can see now, um, we have basically the two lengths. Okay, so now we're going to move on to part 2.2, which is computing the average answer lengths. And so what we want to do now is compute, compute basically the mean of each column. And to do that, we can just basically do df, and then we're going to do the um, name of that column that we just made, which was um, for the human, human answer length. And we can do dot mean to basically um, compute the average, because mean is average. So you guys are run, you can see that the average length um, in characters is 729.88 for humans. And so now let's look at the AI response. It's going to be the same thing, but we're going to do AI instead. So df chatgpt answer length dot mean. So it's going to again find the mean of that column, which is the length, and then save that into AI average. So if we do this, we can see that the AI average length is um, 1098, 1099 um, characters. So. Let's run these test cases to make sure that our numbers are correct, which they are. Okay guys, we're going to move on to part 2.3 now, which is testing if the difference in length is statistically significant. So for this, we're going to be doing a t-test. And so before we do a t-test, we want to see our null and our alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis says that there is no significant difference between the means of the two response lengths, whereas alternative says that there is. And so we're going to use the scipy stats t-test in function to get the t-statistic and the p-value. So what we're going to do is first do our import. So we're going to do import, and we're going to do scipy.stats. So sorry, import t test int from scipy.stats. That's going to give us the import. So I'm going to flip these from scipy.stats import t test int. And then from there, we're going to say, if you look at the syntax it gets right here, it's going to be t stat comma p value. t stat comma p value equals t test int. And then it's also going to take in um, two parameters being the list of the lengths. So then we're going to do df chat gpt, actually df human um what we call it human answer len and then comma df chat gpt answer len so 
that should give us um, our new T stat as well as our P value, which we see right here. Looks good. And then so because our P value is very low, it's less than 0 0.005, what they want us to do here is to choose our conclusion by uncommenting the one line for each section that is correct. So here, P value is less than 0.05, so we're going to uncomment this one. And since it is less than 0 0.05, there is a statistically significant difference. We're going to comment this line. So then if we give this a run, here's our final conclusion right here. And then let's run this test case to make sure we did it correctly, which we should have. Awesome. So now we can move on to part three, which is sentiment analysis. And so a second common critique other than length is that um, AI systems are more subjective and optimistic than human. And so in um, data and computer science, there is a thing called NLP, which involves algorithms that can help analyze polarity and subjectivity scores of a piece of text. And so we're gonna look at both of these now, starting with polarity. So um, we have this library called TextBob that can basically process textual data. And it gives us a polarity score from negative one to one, where negative one is super negative, and then zero is neutral, and one is positive. And so, um, based on that, we're going to um, basically go through the list and then calculate the polarity score for everything in that list. And so, starting with this, we're going to import text bob, of course, first. And then we're going to um, create a polarity function. So, if you look at the text bob tutorial for the quick start, that's going to give us a guide, and we're looking at the sentiment analysis portion. So, if we go control F to sentiment analysis you can see here that how you find the sentiment analysis how you find the sentiment is that you do testimony equals text bob of that thing whatever someone's trying to find and then we're going to do testimonial dot sentiment it's going to give us this and then if we do dot polarity it's going to give us the actual polarity that we want and so what we're going to do is we are going to basically emulate the same thing so the first thing we're going to do is um turn the is to turn the sentence into a text um a testimonial so we're going to say testimonial equals text blob of s pass that in and then we're going to return testimonial dot sentiment um, dot and then here we want polarity so to get this a run we have our new function that is going to find the polarity by passing in um, whatever sentence we want so we can check that on a couple of different ones as you can see here this sentence um, has a more positive sentiment this is saying you're failing discovery so that's negative and then hello world should be neutral um, and then, yeah, so now we can find the polarity of um, human answers. We're going to do that by applying basically our function across um, the entire data frame. So here we can use the apply function. So we're going to say df human polarity is going to, going to be df. And then we want the actual answer, human answer. And then dot apply the function name, which is um, sentiment, right? Polarity, sorry. Polarity. So now this will basically apply polarity across the entire um, human answer column and then find the um, polarity. And we're going to do the same here now, same thing here now, but for answer, or sorry, for um, ChatGPT, which ChatGPT polarity is ChatGPT answer. Let's apply a polarity. And so now we can see we have both human and ChatGPT polarity, so we can give this uh, a quick run to make sure we did correctly, which we did. And so now we can analyze overall results, results so far. So as you can see, um, for response length, um, our p-value was low, so it was significant. And so now we don't know what the polarity p-value p -value is yet, so we're going to calculate that soon. But now we're also going to do something for subjectivity. So subjectivity scores range from 0 to 1, whereas the score of 0 is not subjective and 1 is very subjective. And so we're going to do the same kind of design, but now instead of returning um, polarity to subjectivity. So we're going to say um, sentiment. Uh, what do we call it? We're going to say um, testimony equals text block S. I'm just gonna Actually, I'm going to copy paste this code right here because I know it's going to be very similar, but replacing polarity with sentiment. So I want to just copy paste as much code as I can just to make sure that I don't mess anything up. So instead of polarity, we're going to do subjectivity here. And if we try running this and getting the subjectivity, um, we can see like how subjective a, statement, a subjective a statement is. So here, the best fruit is a kiwi. That's pretty subjective. But winter is colder than summer. That's not really subjective, at least in the United States. Um, and you can always put your own um, thing in. So let's say like uh, micro projects with Michelle are the best videos across YouTube. It's probably pretty subjective. Oh, OK, point three. OK, anyways. Now what we're going to do for part 4.1 is find the subjectivity of human and ChatGPT answers. And so here we're basically going to apply it again. It's going to be an apply function again. So I'm going to copy paste the code because it's going to be the exact same almost. 
but you can do like this. So um, instead of the dot polarity, it's going to be dot subjectivity though. And then here it's just going to be the same thing, but um, it's going to be human answer. All right, let's give this a run, which, okay, it looks good. So now we have four new columns that we added human polarity, chat GPT polarity, human subjectivity, chat GPT subjectivity. Looks amazing. And so now we're gonna give this a quick run and then um, let's see what we have so far. So you can see we have our um, two new columns and we just, I think all that's left now is to see um, this significance. So the first thing that we're gonna do is um, perform a t-test again for subjectivity, and so what I'm gonna do, actually, I'm gonna just copy paste the code from above for the t-test code. So let me go look at it really quickly. So here's what it was. We don't have to import again because we've, re we've already imported once, but what we can do is basically do the t-test, but instead of subjectivity, we're gonna do, sorry, instead of the length, we're gonna do subjectivity. So let's see what our columns were named. So it's just human subjectivity and then chat GPT subjectivity. And then I'm gonna do chat GPT right here. So if we give this a quick run, um, we also want to store these values as new variables. So subjectivity and then subjectivity. If we give this a quick run, we should be able to see our values like so. And then, so since our p-value is again less than 0.05, we can comment out the one that says our p-value is less than 0.05. And this also means that we do have um, statistically significant differences. So we're going to uncomment that one as well. Let me give us a quick run and then make sure it works, which it does. And so now we can um, analyze the results. So they're actually going to do the t test for polarity for us, but we can see our results. So as you can see, um, response length did have a significant um, difference. For polarity, ChatGPT and humans didn't really have a difference, and then um, a not significant difference. And then subjectivity, like we just saw, did have a significant difference. All right, so that concludes today's micro project. Let's do some quick submissions and I will come back to make sure that it works. But that was all the coding we had to do today. So I'm gonna commit my work and then go check on GitHub to see how it did. Okay, so it looks like grading is done and we got our new card, which means we did everything correctly. Um, so as always, if any of these didn't work for you, make sure you go back to that specific session and run the local test to make sure it worked. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. I hope you had a fun time coding with me. And yeah, see you all in the next one, bye.